Hi, I'm Alex Green, better known as IB Crazy, and in this video, I want to show you why I don't necessarily trust a computer-generated antenna. Computer modeling is excellent. It's a great tool to have in your toolbox because it helps you get in the ballpark, but very seldom does it give you an optimal result. And in this video, I'm going to show you why it doesn't and how I optimize in actuality, in true experimentation, to get the optimal result. Behind me, I have an antenna known as a Quaggy, which is a mix between a biquad antenna and a Yagi. Why? Well, biquads are excellent. I love them for the nice solid signal they give, but the range isn't what I need for long range Wi Fi. And what about a Yagi? Well, Yagis have really high gain, but they have a lot of side lobe radiation and they're not very efficient. Plus, the environment detunes them. A Quaggy brings those two worlds together and gives a very, very good result. So, that's what I'm using here. To measure it, I've got this, an Agilent Field Fox Vector Network Analyzer set up in vector voltmeter mode. So I'm going to be measuring the signal strength from my antenna as being received by the helical down there. Now, before we go anywhere else, the first thing we're going to have to do is start with a base point. So the easiest one to start with is the biquad. Now I'm going to have to zero my Vector Network Analyzer. The reason I'm doing this is because a biquad has a very, very well-known gain of 11 dBi. So I want to see how much improvement I can get by adding parasitic elements to that biquad. And right here, I have the papers to set up some computer-generated models. So both of the models here are promising 17 dBi. And on this foam, I have marked the location where those elements have to be placed. Now the reason I'm using foam is that it's, again, RF transparent. I modeled this in free air, so there aren't going to be any beams running down this like you typically see with a Yagi, because I'm just trying to get close right now. So with that, let's build the first antenna designed completely by a computer. Okay, so where did we end up? Minus 5 dB. We actually lost signal strength. We're only receiving now at 30% of the power that we previously were receiving at that antenna because I've put parasitic elements in front of this. We're supposed to be plus 6, not minus 5. So we've actually lost a significant amount of signal strength with the computer generated model. Take note that none of those elements are electrically connected. They're only be ex being excited by the biquad itself. They are causing destructive interference, which is causing the signal at the far end to be much weaker. So the next thing I'm going to do is optimize this antenna, thus make it better, but I'm going to do it empirically using this as a tool rather than a computer. Okay, so as you can see, I just doubled the signal strength. That is, I gained 3 dB over the biquad. That's good. Well, maybe I can add another element, get a little better. Okay, so adding that fifth element, I gained another 1, 1.1 dB. That's great. That means that I now have better signal strength, but I'm only at 15.5 instead of the 17 where I was targeting. I took this model and then plugged it into a computer and then told it to optimize it based on this because obviously what I was doing is effectively guessing and seeing what everything looked like. Now that being said, the computer model of this antenna did show good, but it was showing something about 13 dB and we're measuring about 15 dB. So I'm actually 2 dB better than what the computer predicted I would have. So let's see what happens if I tell the computer to optimize it. So, let's see what happens. Well, back 
to square one. At least we're not at minus five, but we are at flat out zero. In other words, those elements do nothing to help that bi quad. Now, I can move them around a little bit and get them a little bit better, but I've already done that experimentally. I don't know that I can make this much better. And in fact, those elements are only off about a quarter of an inch or about that much from where I previously left them. So why is this? Well, computers aren't perfect. They're not the real world. And unless you can put all of your variables into a computer accurately, it's not really sure what it's going to get. Okay guys, so one thing I didn't mention yet is VSWR, or Voltage Standing Wave Ratio, which is a metric by which all antennas are indeed standardized on. So my SWR of this, at where I'm measuring, which is 2430, is 2.29. 2.3 SWR? That's really bad. Well, where is it best? Well, let's find out. Well, according to this, 2335. So that means that all of my elements are probably just a bit too big. That means I have to scale them all down. But let's see what happens to my signal strength at that frequency. Ah, 5.5 dB. We gained some signal strength. Why? Well, because as you get closer to the resonant frequencies of each of those elements, they're going to produce a better signal, obviously. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to scale down all of these elements and then make the antenna one more time just like this so I can make it for the frequency I'm targeting, which is 2430 megahertz. And well, out of curiosity, let's see how much leakage we're actually getting. Okay, so by increasing the rear reflector size, I gained 0.5 dB, giving me the 6 dB I needed over the 11 dB bi quad for the 17 dBi antenna I was targeting. Of course, I still have to do some work because my spacing is now off. It is set at a different frequency. So I'm going to scale down these elements, make them a little bit smaller, and tune this thing in to 2430 MHz on SWR and then do this exact same thing, playing with element spacing to get the best possible gain. Okay, so in conclusion, you can see that a computer generated model isn't optimal. You still need to go out there in the real world and measure it. So, a purely computer generated model had us at 6 dB. That means we lost 5 dB over the basic biquad. Then, by experimentation, I was able to get this up to 17 dB. But if I used the computer optimization of what I had already measured, I had dropped a few dB. In fact, I was back down to the basic biquad, so there's no reason for the other elements. So this is why I don't trust computer-generated models. They get me close, but until I get them down here and start experimenting with them, well, I just don't trust them, and neither should you. I might be crazy, and as always, keep them flying. So guys, a little bonus information. I wonder what happens when I go ahead and actually put the computer generated model together and see what the SWR looks like. Let's find out. Wow, that changed a lot. I went from a 1.0 to a 2.3, and at my design frequency, I'm at a 3.95. I really missed the mark. So yeah, not only do I not trust its radiation plot, but probably shouldn't trust its SWR prediction either.